Hello and welcome to the Cube Talk Show. My name is Joe Barbieri and uh, this is a show about money and today we're going to focus on uh, a mortgage broker and mortgages in general and as our guest we have uh, Mr. Paul Pitana, mortgage agent from Centum, Centum Mega, Mega Mortgage Incorporated. Uh, so Paul, how are you? Very good, thank you Joe. Thank you for having me on the show. So. Um, I guess to start off with, uh, tell me or tell the audience a bit about your background and the sure. company and what you do. Sure. Uh, well, I have uh, over 15 years uh, experience in the financial industry. Uh, started out as a financial planner, a traditional financial planner. Uh, sold my practice uh, about eight years ago, uh, and then I got into the private investment world after that. And um, uh, most recently, in the last few years, uh, got into the mortgage business and still do life insurance. So I'm still licensed as a, as a life insurance agent. Uh, so I do both mortgages and, and life insurance for my clients. And uh, my primary objective really is to work with my clients and help them achieve their financial goals and, and lifelong dreams. And, uh, you know, we're talking about mortgages today, but really a mortgage agent does more than just mortgages, they take a very comprehensive uh, approach with their clients. Yeah, uh, that sounds pretty all-encompassing. So um, I guess before the <coughs> mortgages, generally, uh, in general, in terms of the overall market, generally you're dealing with real estate, right? primarily for mortgages. What can you say in general about the state of the market right now? Well, there's definitely uh, been a shift in the real estate market uh, in the last few months, uh, especially uh, given the, the tightening of the, the mortgage rules. Um, mm -hmm. Mortgage rules have, have changed really since 2008, and every year they've, they've announced uh, stricter and stricter guidelines uh, with mortgages, and most recently the, the mortgage rules changed back in July and it's become a lot tougher, especially for first-time buyers to, to get into homes. And so that has had an impact on, on, on the market, on the real estate market, to say the least. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been an overheated uh, real estate market. And, and I, I think we're in for, you know, not uh, a huge correction, but just a, a bit of a, a slowdown in the market. And I think that was anticipated. Yeah. Do you see it happening already, the last three, four months? We do. Uh, I, I think since, uh, since around uh, the late summer, uh, we've, we've started to see a slowdown in, in the real estate market uh, to say uh, that you know, that's impacted the, the mortgage business as well. But on the other hand, I think uh, because of the, the changes in mortgage rules uh, and the complexity in the mortgage industry, uh, it's all the more reason for people to uh, to consider working with a mortgage broker. Yes, you know, we're going to dig into that pretty soon. And so, um, well, I guess we can start with that. When people think of a mortgage, they say, well, I'll just go to a bank. And a lot of people won't know what a mortgage broker, how they fit in. So how does that fit in with... It's a great question, and I get asked that question all the time by clients. You know, why should I deal with the mortgage broker? Or why shouldn't I just deal with my own bank? And um, when you know, when I talk to clients about you know what a mortgage broker does versus what their bank does, there's there's basically uh, you know three primary differences when when you go to a mortgage broker. So first of all, when you go to your bank, they're restricted to you know, a finite number of products that they can offer you in terms of mortgage products. And, you know, they're, they're usually their own products. And uh, a mortgage broker, on the other hand, has access to a number of different lenders uh, in the Canadian marketplace. And um, there's, you know, tons of lenders out there, over 50 uh, different lenders that offer, you know, dozens of, of, uh, of mortgage programs. So when you look at you know, the number of mortgage products out there, they're you know, probably talking about four or 500 different products. So a mortgage broker has access to all these different lenders and these different products. And everybody's situation, once it comes to a mortgage, is different. And so uh, a mortgage broker will work specifically with their client to find the, re uh, the best product for them. 
So we find the best product uh, at, at the lowest rate. Because we have access to different lenders, uh, we can usually get a lower uh, rate for our clients. Uh, sometimes, you know, the banks can offer uh, discounted rates, but because of the volume of business that we do with certain lenders, we can, we can usually find you know, the, the best product at the lowest rate for the client. And th the third thing, which a lot of clients aren't really aware of, is that we protect their credit. And so, okay. you know, credit scores are, 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 are very important uh, once it comes to borrowing. So, uh, so when you say protecting credit for someone, what do you mean exactly? Yeah, and uh, it's very important. I guess, you know, I ask that question a lot by clients. What do you mean by protecting credit? And uh, a lot of clients aren't aware, but uh, if they do their own shopping for a mortgage and they hop from one financial institution to another, uh, each bank or lender is going to require a, a credit check uh, from the client. And so if you only do that once or twice, uh, that, that's okay. But if you do it like five or ten times over and you're shopping around from one institution to another, uh, that impacts your score because every time a lender checks your credit, it impacts your score uh, by a few uh, points. And if you do that ten times over, it, it can have a huge impact on your, on your score. By, coming, uh, by going to a mortgage broker, uh, we only have to check credit once and we can provide that credit report to multiple lenders. And so uh -huh. that's what we mean by protecting a client's credit. We, we only have to check their credit once. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, it's good to know. I found that out when I was doing research on FICO scores and credit right. cards, and they said the more you check, the more penalty you'll get. And so it, I assume, uh, I, I understand what it's about. They assume if you're checking all the time that you can't get a loan and you're you're a bigger risk exactly. because you're shopping everywhere and people exactly. are not giving you the loan. So I, I assume that's what's going on. What that, what's behind that? Yes. Does do so. Let's say you check five or ten times and then you stop for two years. Does your score creep back up to? It will. Uh, it does eventually uh, creep back up over time. Uh, on a, on a credit bureau, when we pulled some, when we pull someone's credit bureau. It shows the number of inquiries over the last, you know, one to two years, and we can always see, you know, if a client is, is shop has been shopping around for, for credit, and it, it 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 doesn't really look good on the client when they're when it, when they're trying to borrow, especially when they're trying to borrow for a home. Yeah, and uh, well, I don't know if this is off topic or not, but I'm assuming you're dealing in mortgages, but. Do you do other types of credit, like lines of credit, or is that? Is that we do. Uh, we do have uh, lines of credit, home equity lines of credit, uh, uh, also known as HELOC yeah. uh, products, and uh, that's especially a, a good product for someone that has uh, substantial equity uh, in their home. And uh, yeah, so we, we we also do home equity lines of credit. And that protecting the credit applies to pretty well every. Absolutely. Every type of product that exists. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we only have to check a client's credit once. And uh, that way we're protecting their credit. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so in terms of advice, so uh, again, I'm envisioning the bank because this is where the typical person will think about a mortgage. So do you offer different advice? than a bank would? I, I know there's more product, so that's one part. Is there also a component of here's how you go about it or here's how you deal with the institutions? or? Absolutely. And uh, with my financial uh, planning background, I take a very comprehensive approach uh, when I'm working with my, my clients. It's not just you know selling them a mortgage. It's really looking at the, the big picture of, of their finances, understanding their financial position, their assets and liabilities, and their cash flow, you know, one of the things that uh, I look at is, you know, is there a better way to structure their uh, finances and, and, and can we restructure and, you know, eliminate some of the 
the bad debt, like the credit card debt and, and loans and lines of credits, and just consolidate that, you know, under under one loan or one mortgage. So, I take a very holistic approach uh, once it comes to to working with my clients, um, and you know, I, we'll we'll do some restructuring, and 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 if there's uh, a requirement or, or, or a need to, to seek uh, for a client to seek credit counseling or, or, or someone who can res help restructure their debt over and above what, what we do as, as mortgage brokers, then we'll refer our clients as well. So uh, I, I think debt consolidation is becoming very popular for the public. Absolutely. So, so that's something you, you could do. Absolutely. And it's huge, especially nowadays uh, with interest rates being as low as they are. Um, you know, why would someone want to carry credit card debt that's, you know, at 20% interest or even, you know, car loans and uh, lines of credits that are in, you know, the 8 to 10% range when they can, if they've got equity in their home and we can help them restructure their debt, you know, and bring it all under uh, one mortgage. Uh, instrument, then you know we can uh, actually help them save a lot of money and, and and increase their monthly cash flow, and really that's what it's all about is helping them eliminate bad debt and 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 increase their monthly cash flow. So just for someone who hasn't heard it, so bad debt is uh, high interest debt. Bad debt is high interest debt. Uh, it could include um, high credit card interest, uh, whether it's you know traditional credit cards or department store cards which which sometimes can be upwards of 30 percent uh, car loans um, unsecured lines of credit that can be you know in in the prime plus four percent range so I mean you, you're any once it comes to to bad debt uh, we refer to bad debt as being debt that's high interest at and not tax deductible so you're not you know using the debt for investment purposes. Okay. Um, is, there a, is there a number, an interest rate number that is a threshold that says if it's higher than 6%, you're now in the bad debt category? Well, when you look at uh, where interest rates are today, and they're at historically low levels, I mean, any, uh, you know, a, a, a good client can get uh, an interest rate of anywhere between 3 to four percent, or sometimes even less than three percent, if it's if it's a, a shorter term. Uh, when you compare that to some uh, debts uh, that char, you know, where where the companies are charging upwards of six, seven percent, yeah, then I would say that anything above six or seven percent is bad debt. So it's also relative to the person, what they're able to get, exactly, and what yeah. they already have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, mortgage insurance. Um, I'm sure this comes up. I guess just as a background, what what is mortgage insurance used for, and who would be the best, or who's the ideal person to purchase it? Okay, so mortgage insurance. When when we talk about mortgage insurance, we're talking about creditor insurance that's offered by the lenders. Uh, as mortgage brokers, agents we're obligated to present uh, our clients with uh, the creditor insurance uh, that, that's part of the mortgage commitment. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it can be life insurance, disability insurance, or critical illness insurance, anyone, any combination of those three types of insurance. And it's basically you know, protecting uh, the, uh, the lender. Uh, really, the, yeah. the creditor insurance is offered by the lender, and should something uh, unforeseen happen, you know, in the event of death, disability, or critical illness, uh, the mortgage uh, will be paid off uh, if if someone has creditor insurance. Now, a lot of clients uh, of mine um, opt to waive the creditor insurance. And uh, it's important for me as, a, as, as, their, as their mortgage agent to make sure that they have some type of insurance. So whether it's insurance, their own personal insurance that they already have, uh, whether it's life, disability, or critical illness, or they may want to purchase uh, their own insurance outside of the, the, the creditor's uh, insurance that's being offered. So it's important. I mean, it comes back to you know, what I said be earlier in terms of taking a comprehensive uh, approach with my clients. You know, we want to make sure that the client is protected, 
you know, the, their house is usually their, their biggest investment and we want to make sure that their family is protected in the event of premature death or disability or critical illness. So now, those three types seem to focus on illness and death and is there a sh insurance for unemployment or, uh, well, job loss? Your, your health is good, but you just can't pay the bill for maybe, s maybe your family member is, uh, is ill or you're caregiving for your parent and so you have to leave your job or yeah. is there anything that covers that sort of situation? There can be a component of insurance for job loss, and that's like uh, over and above the the insurance that we're uh, that we're talking about. Okay. So it's a different provider, or right. just yeah. oh, okay. Because I know I've heard that in the past that they used to provide insurance for. Well, if you can't pay, then this insurance, the insurance company, pays your mortgage for X amount of time. Right. So, okay, um, okay, well, if I'm a client and I'm coming to you, dealing with you as a mortgage broker, mm -hmm. how would the process work? So it usually starts uh, with an initial meeting uh, with the client. Uh, it's basically a fact-finding session, uh, just to find out a little bit more about the client and what their goals and objectives are. Uh, Part of that initial fact finding would include uh, taking a mortgage application uh, from the client. So they provide all of their uh, financial information um, on an application. And uh, I guess the first step is, is, is that fact finding session. Uh, the second step would be then to uh, do a credit check on the client, or if it's a couple, I would, do, I would uh, check uh, both uh, the husband and wife's uh, credit. Just to make sure, you know, that I know what uh, what we're looking at in terms of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. their 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 overall financial picture and and their their uh, their credit assessment. The credit's important for me to to pull right away because that will determine uh, which lenders I can go to. So if if I have a a, a credit challenged client, there are certain lenders uh, that will deal with with that market. Uh, if I have a perfect client who's got you know great income, great credit, then I know that I can go to like an A lender and get them the lowest possible rate. So fact finding, you know, information gathering, and uh, and credit check would be the first uh, step in the process. And what I do with my clients then is get what's called a pre-approval uh, on a mortgage. So a pre-approval is basically you know me going to a lender with the information and some su some supporting documents like you know employment letter pay stubs and, and tax information and uh, you know within 48 to 72 hours we can usually have what's called a pre-approval back for, to the client and uh, pre-approval basically will uh, let the client know how much of a mortgage they've been approved for at what rate and what their monthly or bi-weekly payment will be okay and does it tell them the lender as well, or that doesn't really yes. matter? Yes, yeah, it, it'll it tell does. them the lender as well. And and what I uh, can do for my clients is shop, you know, uh, ar around with a few different lenders. So I don't sp uh, specifically go to just one, but I'll I'll shop it around and, and see who's offering the best mortgage at the lowest rate, given the client's particular situation. Hmm. So do you get into things like? Um, the fees or the the uh, an overdraft if they miss a payment or the it's part of the document but it's not the rate it's the parameters is usually that comes a little later in the process when there is what's called a mortgage commitment so um, you know I'll just go into the next steps okay, uh, so if, that's if okay. you will. so once we have a pre-approval back from uh, the lender I can then go back to the client and say, okay, you've been pre-approved for your mortgage, you know, go shop for a home. And I always advise my clients to get a pre-approval first yeah. before they start shopping for a home, especially when they're first-time buyers. Um, you want to know how much house you can afford, really. Yeah. So a pre-approval is great to have because then you know exactly how much of a mortgage you can afford uh, or you've been approved, pre-approved for. 
and you know how much of a home, uh, you know the price point of a home to to, to purchase. And uh, when you have a pre-approval as a buyer, uh, you really come from a position of strength when you're putting in an offer on a home because you know that the legwork has already been done in terms of getting pre-approved. So um, you know once the client puts an offer on a home, uh, usually the offer has the standard conditions, you know, uh, conditional upon inspection and conditional upon financing usually. Yeah. Um, and the financing condition is very important because then the, uh, the, the, the buyer has usually anywhere between five to ten business days to waive that financing condition. So once they have an offer conditional on financing, the client will then come back to me and we, we then go to the lender with what's called a live deal okay. and we go for a full approval. Okay, so because the, most of the work has already been done in the pre-approval process, it doesn't usually take five to ten days for a lender to come back uh, with a full approval. Usually that can be done within a matter of a couple of days. And uh, you know the the lender will come back with what's called a mortgage commitment. Okay, the mortgage commitment uh, can include some conditions that need to be fulfilled. But as long as the client is aware of those conditions and knows that it shouldn't be a problem fulfilling them, then the you know they they know they've got the mortgage from the lender, and they can then waive the financing condition at that point. So that's that's the process really from the beginning when you know when I first meet a client to when they buy a house and they've received the mortgage commitment from from the lender, and then you know usually it involves a couple of meetings, two or three time, two or three meetings with the client. So uh, after they bought their home and the mortgage is uh, ongoing, do you deal with the um, renewals and? the changes and okay so yeah again so this is the next stage ne yeah. <laughs> that's it that's the next stage after the one in between so oh, okay. really um, once the client has signed off a mortgage commitment and you know they've waived the financing on the house the house is, is, is it's basically theirs at, at that point well it's not really theirs until it closes but I mean it's it's uh, it's 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 in writing that you know it's going to close on a on a specific date. Uh, at that point, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that's done uh, by a mortgage broker. So I will you know be in touch with the client's uh, realtor, uh, the client's uh, lawyer, just to make sure that the whole process uh, from from that point to closing uh, is a smooth process. So that's a smooth transition. So. With the signing of the mortgage commitment, that document then goes back to the lender uh, that, that provided the mortgage, and they will put together what's called uh, lender um, instructions for the lawyer. So they'll prepare the lender instructions that then go to the lawyer. It's, it, and that's basically the, the mortgage package that will be uh, sent to the lawyer, usually a couple of weeks uh, prior to closing. And then the lawyer will then meet with the client, uh, usually a few days, like within five to seven business days prior to closing. The lawyer will meet with the clients for the signing of the mortgage uh, documents. During that time, I'm in constant communication with the client, with the client's real estate agent, with the client's lawyer, and anyone else that is involved in the process. So there's a lot of behind the scenes work that, that takes place right up to closing because obviously it's in my best in interest for, for the client to make sure that the closing is as smooth and, and, and the transition is a, as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess we're going to get to the life insurance part soon, but we're just going to take a break now for a few minutes because life insurance will take a little bit of time. Okay. So we'll be back in a few minutes.
back on the Cube Talk Show with Paul Patana, and we're talking about a mortgage broker, how to work with a mortgage broker. Now, we're going to touch a bit on life insurance as it relates to mortgages, and because you also do life insurance. Yes. So, uh, just as a quick basic. Yeah. So, as I said uh, before the break, uh, a client has an option to either uh, accept the creditor. Uh, life insurance uh, through through the lender, uh, or they can opt to uh, purchase their own insurance. Once it comes to life insurance, and and, and as a licensed agent, um, you know I, I basically show the client you know their options. Once it comes to uh, life insurance, there's basically two types of of life insurance. There's temporary insurance, also called term insurance, which is the lowest cost insurance. And then there's permanent insurance, which basically is with the client for the rest of his life, which is more expensive than, than term insurance. Now, there's pros and cons to both term insurance and permanent insurance. So I basically um, assess a client's situation and explain the two options and, and let the client decide which type of insurance they, they, they want to purchase, whether it's term or permanent insurance. Usually with younger couples that are just starting out, and let's say they're buying their first home, and their budget you know, doesn't allow for uh, a lot uh, in terms of a monthly premium on, on insurance, usually they, they opt for what's called term insurance. And term yeah. insurance is for a specified term, whether it's you know, 10, 20, or 30 years, and the premium is fixed for that term. And once it comes to insuring a mortgage for a young couple that's on a tight budget, term insurance is probably the, the, the best way to go because then they can maximize the amount of insurance that they purchase for the amount of premium that they're going to be paying. On the other hand, if a client wants to uh, look at a permanent type of insurance where they're going to have insurance for the rest of their lives, uh, and they know that they can afford a little bit more on a monthly premium for insurance, it's a good thing to get into a permanent insurance policy at a young age because you'll be paying that amount of premium for the rest of your life. As opposed to term insurance where you know, you're, you're paying a premium for 10 years and then 10 years from now you might want to renew the insurance for another 10 years or 20 years and the premium is going to be that much higher because you're older at that that stage. So my role as a, as a life insurance as, as well as a mortgage agent is to explain the different types of insurance and the different options that people have once it comes to uh, purchasing insurance. But bottom line is, you know, I strongly advise my clients to purchase any type of insurance once it comes to insuring your mortgage and, 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 and basically insuring your family and protecting your family when you have a mortgage. So do you, uh, this might sound kind of basic, but if a mortgage is 25 years, the amortization period, do you uh, sell the insurance period to match that, or is that not necessarily? You can. Um, it's, it's, it's a good idea for someone who is on uh, a tight budget, but yet they want their, their uh, premiums to be fixed for as close to the amortization period as possible. So usually with term insurance products, you can, you can buy like a 20-year term. Uh, some of them have 30-year terms. And I mean, there, there might be some companies that where you can buy 25-year, but it's, it's uncommon. Yeah. Usually the common terms are like 10, 20, or 30 years. So we can match the term of the insurance to the amortization period of the mortgage. Mm. OK. So. Um So yeah, we'll get. I guess we'll get back to the process in a way. But so after the house is closed and the mortgage is on, um, what happens after that? How do you interact with the client after and that's, that? And that's a great question. Um, what I do with my clients is I provide ongoing service even after the house closes. So you know, I'm in this business obviously to build long-term relationships with my clients and uh, you know I like to contact my clients at least a couple of times a year 
uh, just to see if circumstances have changed uh, or if there's a way for them or for me to help them find a way to pay down their mortgage faster. You know, sometimes people switch jobs and, and they get uh, increases in, 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 in household income. And, you know, a lot of mortgages uh, these days come with prepayment privileges where, you know, you can actually prepay 20% of the principal on an annual basis or you can increase your monthly payments by up to 20%. And, uh, you know, a lot of clients, even though I explain this to them when I go through the mortgage commitment, they, they forget that they can actually prepay their mortgage. So I like to be in, in constant communication with my clients uh, at least a couple of times a year just to see if s their circumstances have changed and I can help them pay their mortgage uh, faster. The other thing is, you know, being in communication with them prior to the um, uh, expiry of the mortgage term. So if a client is in a three or a five-year uh, fixed mortgage, uh, I make sure that I'm in touch with them at least six months prior to maturity so that we can look at the different options that they have on maturity. Okay, so that's important as well. So I yeah. mean, it's all about, you know, working with the client you know, during the, the process and getting them their mortgage, but also being there for the client you know, throughout the entire term of the mortgage as well. So, um, yeah, so how, how are you paid? Are you, are you paid directly by the client? Okay, so I, I get asked this question all the time yeah. by clients, you know, how much do I have to pay you for your services? And uh, basically we get paid by the lender. So it's, a not, it, it's not an out-of-pocket cost that the client has to write a check and, and, and pay me for my services. So with a conventional mortgage, traditional mortgage, where there's really no extra work involved and you know, the, the client's credit is good and you know, it's, it, it, you know, everything checks out for the client and I can get them like a really good mortgage at a low rate, I get paid from the lender. I don't get paid by the client. It's only in unusual circumstances where there's extra work involved or let's say I have to go to what's called an alternate lender uh, where you know perhaps the client's credit is damaged and we can't deal with you know the, the, the top banks or the top lenders and we have to go to an alternate lender to get them a mortgage. That requires a little bit more work uh, from, from my end and, and from the lenders end as well and and some lenders don't some alternate lenders or, or, or private lenders won't pay a mortgage broker uh, a commission so we have to actually charge the client what's called a brokerage fee in that case mm. so it's 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 with those untraditional or uncommon situations where a client will have to pay a, a brokerage fee but for the most part um, clients you know if, if if we're dealing with a with an a lender a uh, client doesn't have to pay uh, any extra fees. Mm. So these scenarios, w I guess a client would know in advance that Absolutely. they fall into one of these scenarios yeah. and not... Yeah, and that's why it's important that you know during the fact-finding session when I'm gathering information from the client and I'm checking their credit at the same time, if I notice that you know they've got bruised credit and, 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 and I pretty much know which lenders I, I'm, I'm now dealing with, I will let the client know right up front if there are going to be any extra uh, fees involved right, right from the very beginning so that it's no surprise to the client later on. Yeah. So uh, on, a, on a different track, so can you uh, talk about the regulation of the mortgage brokers, the whole industry? Yeah. I'm sure people have asked about that as and well. And that's a very important point that you bring up because uh, you know when when clients are, are dealing with their bank and they're they're dealing with a mortgage specialist at the bank, they don't necessarily bring up the question of you know of, of oh, you know how are you regulated in that because they're basically dealing with the bank and uh, they're they're regulated th in, in a very different way than mortgage brokers are. Uh, with mortgage brokers and mortgage agents, <coughs> we're uh, regulated through a body called the Financial Services Commission of Ontario, or FISCO. Yeah. Uh, and FISCO regulates mortgage agents, mortgage brokers, and mortgage brokerages as well. And there's uh, a, a ton of information on the on the FISCO website. 
where you can actually look up um, the name of a uh, mortgage broker and, and a brokerage, uh, just to check to make sure that you know they're compliant. Uh, Fisco's uh, website talks about all the the, the rules and uh, and the mortgage industry that that mortgage brokers have to follow, and it also provides a. Um, a facility for any complaints, you know, client complaints that, you know, if they if they have some type of complaint, uh, they they usually raise that with Fisco, and so it's a very um, strictly regulated uh, um, industry. The mortgage industry is. So, uh, would you have that website handy, Fisco? Site? I think it's just triple w dot. Uh, is it FSCO? FSCO. Dot com or dot ca. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. you can just Google I've Financial Services Commission of Ontario. Yeah, I, I know I've been on it. I just forget now. But um, so um, I guess as a summary, what should the consumer be uh, keeping in mind with when it comes to a mortgage broker and for their own scenario? So. Once it comes to working with a mortgage broker, I I compare it to you know uh, let's say someone's shopping for a vehicle, a new vehicle, and they're hopping around you know from one dealer to another, but they don't necessarily know which vehicle they they want to buy or, or which model, which type. If if they do all the shopping around on their own, without getting you know any advice, you know there's there's a lot of choice, there's a, there, there's a lot of complexities and a lot of things to take into consideration. Imagine if that, that client, you know, shopping for a car, has an expert take them to an auto mall and basically show them the differences between different, you know, models and, and model types and explain what the differences are and negotiate with, uh, you know, once they once they figure out what type of car they want to buy, then you know this professional will negotiate on, on the client's behalf to get them the best car at the lowest possible price. A mortgage broker, that's the analogy that I use uh, uh, for a mortgage broker. So a mortgage broker basically works with the client to figure out which mortgage to get them, uh, which lender to go to, you know, shop around and get them the, the, the best mortgage given their situation at the lowest possible rate. And so basically the mortgage broker is alleviating all that pressure or uh, the work that would be upon the client if, if he or she were to do it on, on their own. Um, it's also important to understand that a mortgage broker is part of one's financial team, if you will. Uh, coming from the financial planning business, I know that you know with clients, it's important to have <coughs> different members on your financial team. So by that, what I mean is, you know, you have a financial advisor, you can have an accountant, you can have a lawyer, you can have a real estate agent, you can have a banker. Well, consider a mortgage broker as being a part of that financial team to complement and work with the other members of the team. So, I mean, it, it, in a nutshell, what, what I advise clients is, to, to find a mor mortgage broker that they're comfortable working with, that you know, understands the industry, is knowledgeable about the different lenders and their products, and basically that will be part of this financial team. So do you, uh, do you find you're in a situation where you're working with the team members? Absolutely. And the lawyer, I think, is common because of the real estate deal, but say uh, the accountant or, or the, even the banker, do you tend to interact with them? I like can I not a, all the time, but sometimes is that I can, especially if it's uh, if it's a commercial mortgage. Uh, you know, then I'll be working with more of the team members, like their, you know, banker, accountant, and lawyer. If it's a typical residential mortgage, it may not be necessary to to work with the accountant, but I'll definitely work with with, with the lawyer. Uh, with their real estate agent, uh, an appraiser of the home, you know, different different members of uh, of, of their team. 
So, uh, sorry, speaking of appraisers, do you, uh, do you deal with that aspect of it or is that more? We do. Um, in the case of resale properties, uh, especially when uh, it's, if it's a private sale, um, perhaps not an MLS listing, uh, an appraisal is usually required on the property and uh, sometimes the lender has specific appraisers that they will deal with and, and they'll send out. Sometimes they'll give us the option of, of choosing an appraiser uh, on behalf of the client. So I get involved in, in that as well in terms of you know, working with the appraiser. And that's very important once it comes to uh, you know, knowing the value of a property so that, you, so that a lender will uh, have that information to properly approve a client on a mortgage. You know, I've had situations where uh, the appraisal comes back like fifty to sixty thousand dollars below what um, it was supposed to be uh, appraised at, and then it causes it, it can cause problems in terms of re talking about in, in refinancing situations where a client is refinancing their property and they're trying to get more equity out of their property. Sometimes, you know, uh, an appraisal can come back and, and be uh, a lot different than, than what we originally anticipated, and that's where, you know, we have to work with the lender and with the appraiser and, and, and try and figure out a solution there. Mm. So, uh, if people want to contact you or uh, um, call you for a mortgage or for advice, where uh, how, yeah, how can they find you? I'll get my contact information out so everybody has my, my uh, uh, correct info. My uh, direct line is 647-405-8678 uh, or they can reach me by email at megamortgage at centum.ca so that's megamortgage at c-e-n-t-u-m dot c-a and my website is www.centum.ca forward slash Paul underscore Pitana, P-I-T-T-A-N-A. -T -T okay, so thanks for coming on. Thank you very so much, uh, Joe. So uh, that's our show for today, and that's the Cube Talk show. Uh, this show uh, airs usually at 10 p.m., uh, for the month after today, so uh, and it'll also be on my website, www.jotheinvestor.ca, under the in the media tab and the Cube Talk Show, and to contact me, my email is uh, jotheinvestor.today at gmail.com, and uh, for all other information, it's also on my website under the contact us page, and thanks very much, and have a good evening.